Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Adam bin Bahrain, and today I'll be presenting my industrial cleaning report at Bank Kerjasama Rakyat Malaysia Berhad. So let's go into the Bank Rakyat's profile. Bank Rakyat was established on the 28th of September 1954 under the Cooperative Ordinance 1948. The transformation in 2002 of the bank from conventional banking system to Islamic banking system that based on Sharia. Bank Rakyat is also an agency under the Ministry of Entrepreneur Development and Cooperative (MEDEC), where they committed to support the mission of the ministry. So, what is a cooperative bank? Financial cooperative. There is co-op is a type of a financial institution that is owned and operated by its members. Um, the goal of a financial cooperative uh, is to act on behalf of a unified group to offer traditional banking services and as well to differentiate themselves by offering above average services along with competitive rates in areas of insurance, lending and investment dealings. So what is the difference that we can see from a cooperative bank to a conventional bank? So um, uh, conventional banks can easily be described as a, also as a financial intermediary that means the borrowers and depositors and provides banking services to the customer. It's just that commercial bank is a bank that is formed for the commercial purpose and hence its primary aim is to earn profit from the banking business. So next, um, what is Islamic financing institution? Um, there is a two principal core principle that an Islamic financial institution need to adhere is uh, Islamic banking are the sharing of profit and loss and it is also the provision of the collection and payment of interest by lenders and investors. So these two core principles is what make it um, differ from um, other conventional banking institutions. So let's venture in into the part of SWOT analysis that I have done from Beraya. SWOT analysis is conducted through my observation working at Beraya Throughout my six month of internship, um, working under the sustainability department, as I was able to gain and learn so many new things, which was easy for me to segregate the strength, weakness, opportunities, threat that I can place under SWOT analysis. So first and foremost, let's talk about um, Bank Riot's strength. So um, in my opinion, the inherent strength is in the value of cooperative itself. Um, cooperative banks are owned by their members, usually their customers more so than the shareholder. Hence, the priority that the bank needs to maintain is uh, maximizing customer value over profit. Um, so, without a doubt, this place a, an urgency by managers to try to maximize and satisfy their customer. Um, by doing so, Ben Riot will present it, um, a lot of benefits, advantages, not just for the well-being of the customer, but the economy as a whole will also be affected positively. On that note, um, cooperative banks are also a more focused driven towards providing SMEs and individuals. As cooperative banks, our, we allow ourselves to look more than just a perfect credit score and to cater to a less profitable individuals or company, which always being overlooked by most commercial and conventional banks. Um, cooperative banks are focused more on profit maximization so that they believe a well detailed observation of a potential customer and lower income household is very expensive and time consuming, which to an extent is not wrong, but when a decision is made without a proper risk management and relying heavily on a system that are very strict, I believe the banking relationship are tarnished and decision making become more and more centralized. Uh, without a doubt, um, commercial banks are no longer an institution that are trying to know more over their community, hence the status of the local economy are not well versed. 
So next point of strength uh, from Bank Riot that I can see is that um, cooperative bank are more stable and reliable during a time of crisis. This can be observed during the financial crisis. European cooperative banks do not directly engage in some speculative activities, hence they withstood the dire time better than other financial institutions. Cooperatives were also more equipped to handle crises as they are much better capitalized than commercial banks. This indicates that cooperative banks have great priorities and service. Also, uh, they have a strong financial strength while commercial banks most are motivated to lessen their capital in order to boost up their returns on equity. But in an unprecedented situation like um, the spread of COVID-19, they are not very reliable. Conventional banks are not very reliable. While maintaining a huge amount of capital, cooperative is essential to maintain the resilience of a country financial system. Okay, let's move on to weakness. Um, I acknowledge that Bayright is putting their customer first rather than anything else, but it is not necessarily, necessarily true with one's personal interests. As director may have different intention or direction that are leaning more on going self-benefit in the expense of availability of the public. Um, uh, what I'm trying to say, um, the members of the board, for example, in order to advertise his or her career or to be appointed um, to some better position or title, they may seek to get a specific credit within the community. As, as we recognize bumping up their own social status and their political career. As the member of the board continue to perform their specific role but following their personal interest or intention, without a doubt, different intention creates a different mindset. Hence, decision making will be made impartially. Members of the board may redirect collective action away from their own objective, leading to less efficient solution and suggestion. Um, next, profit maximization is a perfect efficiency. Um, the theory of economics states that in a perfect world where market competition is strong, perfect relay of information and rational behavior, perfect maximization. Profit maximization is the ultimate way of maintaining a perfect, perfect efficiency, which is directly opposite with a cooperative models of focusing on customer values such as Bank Riot. Bank Riot do maintain their relationship with its members, but we cannot deny the fact that this method do hold back some progress or innovation and the optimum usage of the capital. This is because profit of their members from the past until now is held in a form of trust rather than distribute various investment portfolios or even distribute it to owners. Furthermore, let's talk about um, the opportunities. Bank Riot need a proper plan and major um, allocation on the development of human capital, such as training, as it is very important. Development of human capital lays the foundation of a great financial institution as improving and enhancing knowledge as well as their skill is vital in keeping and sustaining the banking industry itself. The primary of training is essentially to build knowledge and human resource skill that can contribute in competency of service toward their customers. In Islamic banking, training is not just on the matter of operational procedures, knowledge of the product that they offer or even soft skill as more important part in question is the knowledge on Sharia. So this is a great opportunity that the barrier can take um, to differentiate themselves from um, their competitors. Sharia knowledge should be prerequisite and one of the fundamental value need to have from their human resources. So next, um, let's talk about digital, digital digitalization. Unlike older generation, have no um, younger generation have no interest or desire for physical interaction as they are so comfortable doing everything online. This generation is so focused on efficiency as they would demand direct access and immediate response to their wants and needs. So Benoit should cater more towards providing their needs by digitalization. Digitalization means that banking is no longer being caged to any financial institution or branch. Rather than with technology, everything is at our fingertips. Service include 
easy access to their personal financial information, instant view of transaction, funds transferring into bank or even to a third party, and so on without compromising on their privacy and security. So last but not least, um, let's talk about threats. Misconception and inter- misinterpretation. So most people's first impression when we engage on the topic of Islamic financial concept, they narrow it down to the impression of a halal loan compared to the traditional alternative. Although Islamic banks' products are very attractive and competitive, positive perceptions are very important. This is because Islamic institutions are directly competing with an established conventional counterparts. The level of understanding of the Islamic financial concept will be a prime factor in determining the public overall acceptance towards Islamic financial institutions. Even though Malaysia is a diverse country that consists of multiple races and religions, the understanding and acceptance of these concepts can be varied and quite low. More than that, cybercrime is a byproduct of an advancement of technology. By adapting ourselves with technology without a doubt, cybercrime is something that comes along with it. Um, cyber security's vulnerabilities, vulnerabilities um, are usually the main problem that mitigates any form of financial crime. Cyber attacks can also be considered as a legal risk. An unprecedented attack could mean a huge amount of reputational loss and loss of customers. Day-to-day operations could also be affected which can result in a significant damage in revenue and the image of financial institution. In a broader perspective, confidence and trust between customer and the bank could not be sustained as people mostly conduct everything online from buying groceries to paying their monthly commitment. Okay, on the next portion of the presentation, let's talk about discussion and recommendation. For the first part, um, I recommend for Bank Riot to diversify their financial portfolio. We know that a cooperative bank practices customer maximization more so than profit maximization. Hence, 80% of Bank Riot's total portfolio is mainly personal financing. My suggestion is, why not the institution try to diversify more in expanding their portfolio of its structural changes? When a bank is to hold on to one part, they may end up losing the opportunity to be exposed into a more profitable sector. Moving forward, they have to venture more on risk consideration in terms of expanding. Not that personal financing will be put aside. House, car financing, retails and areas, also credit card and so on can also be a part of the focus in managing their portfolio. As well as satisfying members' needs and demands. Statistics shows that there is a huge gap between personal financing and other financing segments such as automotive lending and mortgages. The issue is that the huge gap is not a sustainable way for the future of Benayat. Benayat should take the opportunity to help XME financing them according to their qualification and credit score. SME lending and personal financing is different as bank's risk management team will diligently assess the risk before granting an appropriate amount of loan to their SME customers. <clears throat> so moving forward, um, to uh, in order to combat their weakness, I suggest they seek advice and vote. Members of the board should review and investigate whether the conflict of interest that is pointed out would subject the company to a regulatory non-compliance or breach of their legal responsibilities. Members of the board are also entitled to seek advice and recommendation from third party experts on the matter at hand. More so, in an event of voting, the interested members of the board are not, shall not participate or to cast votes. On a different note, the member need to invent a measure to address some scenarios that includes officer, shareholder or other director believe that, that one has not disclosed a conflict of interest on divided intentions. They need to be given the opportunity to be heard. <clears throat> Other than that, coaching and mentoring program. Bank Riot could look into executive development programs that are usually run by businesses, schools, universities, or other academic professionals. This type of program are to focus on different aspects of the human capital development. If include functional training, business management program, Islamic financing, as well as general management 
is to equip workers in the transition of their career. Furthermore, professional coaching and mentoring are very simple to execute, where most instances being delivered on a one-to-one basis as a way of honing their skill set and shaping them to become a leader. During coaching and mentoring session, executive receive personal feedback is a good way of transforming workers to the best version of themselves. Most of the programs do include coaching session as part of the program. In the end, investing in a good human capital development is vital in any organization in order to maintain the competitiveness level in the industry. Last but not least, internal corporate module and policy. Cybercrime is no longer an illegal activity that can just be put aside. Thousand victims and families affected around the world and the number is rising day by day. Banking sector is considered as one of, one of the most targeted as far as cybercrime is concerned. First step a bank can do is to implement internal corporate modules and policies that is catered to defend from fraud and cybercrime. Meaning that customer data should be main priority and always being regularly monitored and secure. Other than that, bank employees must have a separate account that are not disclosed to the public, more so they practice in changing their password semi-annually or even quarterly. Next, set up a proper program or awareness campaign on the threat of cybercrime and its destructive nature. All workers and employees need to be aware of the danger of cybercrime. The program could educate people on how scammers operate their crime. Some may go through telephone and communicate verbally or even some ways there is a pop-up on an unsecured link that can be clicked by uneducated employees. Building a bank cybersecurity is a continual effort. It's not a one-time event. Surveillance technology must be used to continuously monitor system in order to uncover any loopholes that have been created. So uh, that's all from my presentation today. Thank you.